Panagustasana today, the big toe pose. So it's, got, it's the first foundational uh, asana, standing posture and forward bend. Three vinyasa. So you start with the hands at the waist and crouch. So you coil your body into a crouch and then a light spring separates the feet, lift the chest, come halfway forward with a hinging at the hips. Okay, and so ideally you don't want any spinal flexion at this point. You want to have the pelvis horizontal and the spine emerging horizontally out from there. Then reach and catch your big toes. And this is a mudra or a seal. So you grab very snugly. And then you use that, your big toe as a fulcrum. Okay, so as, a, as leverage to stabilize your limbs. So it's, it's like you're trying to stand up, but you've got your grip on your toes won't let you. So you fully extend the arms and lift up and shift your weight forward to an edge of imbalance. Ha, and there you have it. So the thighs root back, the arms pull up, the spine lengthens, and even the navel lengthens. Okay, so that's the, the setup vinyasa to the position you want to explore. And your tendency will be to stay back and to keep this um, not, the skeletal line, you want to clearly create extension along it and shift forward to that point of imbalance. So you have to get used to that, how exposed that is. And so when you do fold, it's with a gesture. So you keep that um, strength of the grip, bend the elbows out to the side, and exhale forward. Gesture, a purposeful movement of the body that is intended to express an idea, an action, or to convey some kind of meaning. You're pulling with your fingers, pulling up, and pushing your fingers down with your toes. And your, the elbows are directly out to the side. So, and the legs are lengthening, so they're getting taller and taller as you stay, and you're rooting back through the thighs. And then the spine itself is, it's being supported by the dynamic action of your legs and arms that's led by your, this connection between your fingers and toes. So the head is free, the neck is free, the belly is free, and there you have it. And then you come out by going back to that same setup with a move. So straighten the arms, breathe in. So it's, it's like you're trying to stand up, but you can't because you've got yourself pinned and your weight is forward. Okay, and then you go hands to waist with an exhalation and lengthen the spine and push back with your fingers. That's all with the out breath, and that's a bandha inducing move. So that gives you Uddiyana Bandha. It's often people miss that bandha opportunity, and it's really interesting that it's the dynamic position that helps you learn the bandhas. Okay, so you lift your head and chest and deliberately stop there and put, take your hands to your waist. Okay, so you're actually pushing back on your thighs strongly and lengthening your spine away. And you can stay there for even more than one breath if you want, but certainly for one full flushing of the lungs. And look at the feet. So the feet charge, the thighs charge back, and that action of the legs allows the spine to emerge, which hollows your belly. Okay, and then finally you come up. And what you'll see people do often, yeah, they'll, you miss the opportunity. Okay, so remember to stop at that halfway point. Ground your legs, reach forward through your spine. What I've given you there is like the ideal, or the very classic position that you're going for. It can take months or years to be able to create that kind of clarity through your skeletal lines and create that deep of a forward bend. So here's some ways to work with it um, in order to develop it. So the, the first way to work on it is just valuing this setup more, like working there as though this were the pose, spending 
five breaths, eight breaths, 10 breaths, and then, and then you could approach. So you're not really, go, go way in. You're not trying to get way in here necessarily. You come kind of going uh, part of the way and work the leg actions more and keep your weight forward and try to feel this belly release. Because if you're tight, so suppose that the, and you keep the leg straight, if you're tight, what will happen is your back will round, your belly will harden, and your spine will go very round. Okay, so that is not what you want. Okay, so th that's why you will lengthen, kind of come out this way, rather than going down. Okay, now the second option would be to bend the knees. Go ahead and bend and shift your weight forward, and then you release your belly and let the spine cascade down. Now, if you use this option, you've got to go against this um, resistance. So you don't just bend your knees. Yeah, that won't do you any good. What you need to do is push against the resistance by lifting the hips, by imagining that the longer you stay there, the taller your legs get. By keeping a good grip on your toes and pulling and valuing the hollow belly and the released head and neck. Okay? If you like this video, check out my Foundation First video course on my website.